It's the moment of truth now. I've done all the prep work I can. I've taped off the neck with a very, very tiny reveal uh, for the strip between the roasted maple and the regular maple fretboard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray the back of this first along with the sides and let that dry. Um, my plan here is to let this dry for a considerable amount of time, then flip it over. And because lacquer melts into itself, my hope is that when I paint the top side, go over the sides again, it will all smooth itself out. Of course, the lacquer itself isn't the last coat. Um, we're gonna do a clear coat as well. And so, even though I'm going to try not to uh, need any sanding, um, you know, that's always an option as well. And so, the last thing I can say is I, I heated up my can of lacquer in the sink. This is recommended by a lot of people to get a finer mist. And so, I'm gonna put my mask on and uh, see what this looks like. Not bad so far, I can already see I've caused a little bit of a run here, and so I'm just going to try and be more careful. Um, essentially what I was trying to do is kind of a mist coat here, so that I can get a nice even coverage um, without making a mess like that. So hopefully when I do a couple more coats, um, that will smooth itself out uh, in such a way that I won't have to do any touch up. And so what I'm going to do now is let this dry, come back uh, in a little bit, uh, do a second coat, and then um, if it's covering well, then we'll do two coats, and if it's not, we'll keep going. The guitar has been drying for an hour or so, and I'm pleased to say that the areas that look like runs uh, were actually just slightly heavier than the others, and so it doesn't look like I'm gonna have any additional work after the first coat. And so now I'm gonna go put a second coat on here, again, trying to be careful to have a nice smooth uh, coat. Um, it looks like there's a couple of areas I missed in terms of my, my, um, my filling. Um, hopefully those will fill in a little bit. Uh, this lacquer is pretty thin, I think intentionally. Um, so we'll have to see if, if more coats uh, makes that go away. And of course, if the clear coat leveling uh, helps it go away. But overall, I'm really pleased at how this first coat turned out and uh, look forward to seeing how the second one goes. The second coat is dry and uh, it's already turning out to be a very intense, uh, beautiful color. As I go and take a look at a couple of areas, um, they're a little bit thin and so I'm going to do a third coat, uh, but I'm not going to go too heavy. Um, I don't know if I can pick it up here. There you go. So I have at least one run. Uh, I really try not to do that, um, but it is what it is. And then so I go around kind of on the edges as well. And so I'm going to do my third coat here. 
try and clean some of this up. It's really interesting that even with the green filler and the sealer coats, um, you're still seeing some of the pores here. And so, you know, I got a whole can and so I'll use it uh, to get my the base coat the way I want it and then to move on to clear. It's been a couple of days since the last time I did any spraying. Since I'm still working out my technique, I got a few runs in the lacquer. And so what I did was I needed to let the guitar dry for a little while. I used a razor blade and scraped it off. And then for good measure, I went over it with 400 grit sandpaper. Now the sanding piece is probably not required um, because the lacquer will melt into itself, you know, as you put on successive coats. Um, but I wanted to go over it just to make sure that I checked every area that I didn't miss anything. And it certainly isn't going to hurt. The other issue is that I ran out of paint. Um, what I hadn't realized was that TV yellow itself is more of a process for painting a guitar, uh, not just a color. I don't really care about the vintage history of of the the color. I just liked the the mustardy, cream colored sort of uh, guitars, and so I ended up running out of paint because I guess you you do white underneath first, and then you do green filling, and you do this whole whole series of steps. And so uh, it took a couple of days for me to get another can of paint, and so now I'm going to go over this uh, really lightly. Um, trying to get as smooth a coat as I can. Obviously, I have a pretty, pretty good base coat down already. That tip about heating up your lacquer cans before you spray, well, it's a real thing. I thought I could get away with not doing it. Uh, I did it on the first can. I didn't do it for the second can because, you know, frankly, it's pretty hot outside already. Uh, but room temperature wasn't enough, and sure enough, it splattered all over. And so I'm going to take an 800 grit and just lightly wipe those down uh, before I uh, do any more coats. Ended up having to give up on painting this morning. It's just too swampy outside. Um, we've also, there's just a ton of bugs. I didn't realize how much spray paint seems to attract bugs and things. And so I think what I'm going to do is uh, give it a break for today before I ruin anything. And then uh, I guess wait till there's it's a lower humidity day and, and perhaps go back to spraying inside my garage. Luckily, the humidity died down quite a bit and I was able to spray some more coats of lacquer on. Uh, at this point, I've used two full cans of the TV yellow. Uh, it's definitely too much. I really wish uh, I could have done it with just one. But, um, you know, I've done it with two here and it's nice and, and um, coated. And so... I'm going to let this dry for several days, kind of inspect and see what it looks like, and then I can move on to clear coat. The guitar's had about 24 hours to dry, and so I'm going to take the tape off the fretboard and see how I did with the paint job. I got all the tape off and all I can say is, wow, I'm so happy at how this turned out. Uh, if you can see out in here, I got a super, super hard line uh, between my fretboard and the neck and that's exactly what I wanted. Um, there's a little bit of a lip because the lacquer is obviously uh, slightly thicker than where the fretboard is. Uh, I'm gonna be spraying the fretboard with clear lacquer along with the body and so my hope is that that will start to smooth itself out um, during the lacquer uh, coating process. And then of course, you know, there'll be a sanding, you know, finished sanding process at the end. I got a really great, 
you know, result here um, at the nut, a nice crisp line. Um, you know, there's just a couple of areas that I can probably hit lightly with a, a razor blade. Um, there's also a little bit of, of stickiness from the tape on the on the sides of the fretboard. I don't know if it's because it was so hot and humid, if it melted a little bit, or if it was on there um, just a little bit too long. Uh, it, it's going to be perfectly workable. Um, so certainly take my time. Uh, I'll probably end up using a razor blade there too, just to just scrape off anything that needs to be there. But uh, I couldn't be more pleased about how this is going to look. Um, so I'm going to end this video here. Um, I'm going to let this dry for a little bit longer. Um, the weather is getting worse uh, outside in terms of heat and humidity. Uh, later this week is supposed to be nicer. So I'm going to wait uh, until then to do um, the, uh, to start the lacquer coats. Um, but yeah, there's nothing else I can say other than, you know, I, I'm super pleased with how this turned out. I look forward to seeing how it looks with clear. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, do all that fun stuff, and uh, I'll see you next video.